Good morning. Welcome back to Billy the Dad. I'm Billy, dad of eight. For those of you who don't know me, I'm an old retired Navy senior chief and uh, I'm just a regular guy, regular guy like you, um, trying to get back into shape the way I should be. Um, I got tired about seven weeks ago, almost eight weeks ago, just tired of not feeling, feeling right, not feeling healthy. And so I decided to start getting back in shape. And I'm just sharing with you every day, six days a week, uh, what I'm doing um, to just do basic things. Good diet and exercise. That's it. Good diet and exercise. Simple, right? Simple, not easy. So I'm, I'm doing this here uh, to hold myself accountable. Hold myself accountable to you, uh, my virtual core group of people who are uh, helping me, um, as well as my, uh, my real core group, my kids who work out with me five days a week. So today's topic, we're going to talk about how strong should I be? As, as you know, if you're following me, yesterday we started a seven-week training plan. Um, and the question is, why do I need to be as strong? Why am I doing this? Why do I, um, how strong should I be uh, when I'm lifting weights? Tomorrow we're going to do an assessment, um, lifting some weights. Um, so what, what should our goal be? Mountain Tactical Institute has a lot of really good articles. I would encourage you to go, uh, go on that side, Mountain Tactical Institute. Um, um, I'm gonna put, I'll put a link um, in the description. You can uh, see how to get there. They have one of their articles though is, are you strong enough? Take the MTI Relative Strength Assessment. And the article talks about how strong you should be depending on uh, what activity you're doing. So Mountain Tactical Institute, they, um, by their name, they mostly train athletes or professionals in the, um, in the area of mountain training, mountain sports, as well as tactical training. So that's where, that's where they gear their training. But in their article, they talk about it depends on what your job is. Um, there's a difference between football player strength. Um, football players usually moving heavy weight, at, like moving each other around 200, 300 pound people moving um, short distances. So a football player versus a marathon runner who is carrying as little weight as possible over a long distance as fast as possible. So you think about different athletes, a decathlete um, who is doing multiple events, sprints, longer distance, throwing things. Um, that's going to be different strength than a gymnast who is um, showing high, huge amounts of strength um, with just their body, especially upper body, um, versus a power lifter who is moving huge weight more along the lines of a football player, but even less running, actually no running for power lifters. So different types of strength. Um, Mountain Tactical Institute tends to train people who move distances, sometimes moving weight over distances. And they kind of break it down into three categories of people that they focus on and train. Um, and I would put myself into one of those categories uh, as far as the level of fitness I want. So they break it into, um, first you have mountain athletes. Those are professionals who are doing races and things. So think of rock climbers, mountain bikers, skiers or snowboarders, adventure racers. These are people who are competing for time um, in a mountain or a rugged terrain. Um, so they're going to streamline their weight as much as possible um, to get be as light as they can to move a fast pace over distance. Then you have mountain professionals. These are people who are not necessarily racing, but they are they are covering large distances, but sometimes they're with a little more weight. Think of mountain guides who are taking people on trips in the mountains. They need to carry a little bit more weight because they're going to carry communications or um, first aid, um, other things that your the regular um, tourists aren't going to have. Think of ski patrols who have to be able to ski distance, but then be able to get somebody out of there. Game wardens, mountain SAR, um, search and rescue, those type of people. Those would be mountain professionals. So they're going to carry a little bit more weight than your, um, than your professional athletes. Um, and then the final group are your tactical athletes. These would be your military uh, infantry, military special forces, law enforcement, especially when you start getting into SWAT, of fire rescue. So these are people who are going to go these distances but carry large amounts of weight because uh, you think of law enforcement military, they're carrying firearms, ammunition, communications, plus their packs, their uh, the food they need. Um, sometimes having to carry people out, you think of your, um, your uh, medevacs and um, your SAR, that sort of thing. Um, those uh, tactical athletes are going to carry the most weight, body armor, they're going to carry a lot more weight over distances. So those are kind of the three categories that Mountain Tactical Institute uh, breaks down the, the people that they train, their gears focused toward. 
Um, they had developed a standard assessment for basic exercises um, that they developed by looking at um, doing tests on multiple athletes in different um, different areas and seeing what average uh, what the average strength was for these athletes, and they base it upon their strength based on their body weight. So it's a ratio. Relative strength is your body weight um, plus the, the the weight you carry uh, for your strength. Of course, the lighter weight person is going to be able to travel faster uh, to an, to a point. If you get so light, then you start losing strength. So there's a there's a there's a relative strength you need to be able to have. So to break these down. Um, real quick, um, mountain athletes, they, oh, first of all, the four, the four, uh, um, events that they measure are the front squat, the bench press, hinge lift, which is, is almost the same as the deadlift, um, and then the pull up. Um, and that's not a weighted, that's a regular body weight pull up, front squat, bench press, hinge lift or deadlift and the pull up. So for the mountain athlete, the mountain athlete, they, they estimate your front squat and your bench press should be roughly um, one and a quarter, 1.25% of your body weight, 1.25% of your body weight for men and 1% of your body weight for women, front squat and bench press. So um, for me, my body weight right now is about 165. Um, so a, a one and a quarter percent of my body weight would be 207 pounds, 207 pounds. If I get my weight down closer to 155, then a pound or one and a quarter of my body weight be 195. Of course, for women at one uh, one time, their body weight um, at 150, 155 would be 155. So that's front squat bench press for the mountain athlete. Um, that's somebody who's going to be racing over a distance. For the hinge lift, they say 1.75% um, of your body weight. Um, 1.75% of your body weight for the mountain athlete. So for me at 165, that's gonna be 289 pounds uh, for the hinge lift. At 155, that's gonna be um, uh, 155 pounds body weight, then that's gonna be 272 pounds. And then the pull up they say is 15, 15 pull ups for men, five pull ups for women. That's for the mountain athletes. The mountain professional, it goes up a little bit. Instead of for a front squat and bench press, instead of 1.25, they go up to 1.35. 1.35 front squat and bench press for the hinge lift, 1.85. So it went up about 10%. And then the pull up is still at 15. And then for the tactical athlete, so I would I would put this more as the category that I would strive for, the tactical athlete. Front squat is one and a half times your body weight, one and a half times your body weight. Front squat as well as bench press. So for me right now at 165, my target is about 248, we'll round up to 250. So my target, my goal is 250 for the front squat and the bench press. And then for the hinge lift, two, per, or two times body weight. Hinge lift, two times body weight. So for me, that's gonna be 330 pounds. Um, at 165. If I get my weight down to 155, then I'm looking at 310 for my hinge lift. And then pull-ups are still at 15. That just gives you a rough idea. I'll put these numbers down in the description um, and they'll be on, uh, they'll be right up there. I'll put the, um, I'll put those numbers as well uh, so you can see that. They actually have an assessment in that same article, um, a way to, to run this assessment, give yourself a score. I'm not gonna go through all that right now. How heavy should you be real quick? How heavy should you be? The ideal body weight. There's another article um, called um, Ideal Body Weights for Mountain Athletes, Mountain Professionals, and Tactile Athletes. I'm not gonna go through all that right now. Maybe maybe another day we'll, I'll, I'll tell you what those weights are. I would just say for me right now, um, what be, between being a mountain, um, a mountain athlete and a tactical athlete, somewhere in there at five foot six, I should be somewhere between 140 and 155 pounds. Um, that'd be the ideal weight, depending on whether I'm racing or I, like a rock climber, a five foot six rock climber is gonna be lighter than a five foot six um, SWAT operator. Uh, so 140 to 155 is my would, would be generally my ideal body weight, um, just to give you a rough idea. That's it for today. I don't want this to go any longer. Um, that's how strong we should strive to be depending on what you're doing. Again, it's relative, it's strength to body weight ratio depending on what your goal is. 
Thanks for joining me at Billy the Dad. I hope this is helpful to you. Helpful for you. Please share this. Um, like it. If there's something you want to know more about, throw it in the comment and I will answer your questions. Um, I want to be a help to you uh, as much as you're helping me. Uh, but I appreciate you joining me. Make sure you're helping somebody else. Help somebody else get to the gym. 90% is just showing up. I'll talk to you tomorrow.